Hi guys, today's video is kind of an amalgamation between the if I was broke and the if I had to start again from scratch. So like a budget houseplants from having nothing to everything that you need, cheap, you know. So the things you would need to consider when buying houseplants on a budget is obviously the price, but also if you get like a big, say like a calathea, if you've got a really big one, that will be more established and might less might last you longer than a smaller one and then you need to consider whether or not they'll fit in your house without things like grow lights and humidifiers do you have a cold house is it going to freeze in winter that kind of thing because you don't want to spend the money on the plants just for it not to thrive i know it's really tempting especially when you see a plant that you really like every time i see a maiden hair fern i'm like come home with me go to the garden center look at the plants that you like the look of go home without the plant research it and then go back now i know this is different to how plant people normally approach buying plants but if you're on a budget it's best to, it's best to, it's best to do your research obviously pick whatever you like i've made a list of some like good choices top of the list is philodendron brazil specifically brazil over the other ones there's just something about them that's really chill mine is so it's freezing cold in the uk at the moment it's like minus four and it's still growing it doesn't look great it's obviously like not loving this weather but it's still growing it's got several growth points and it's fine it's also a hanging plant so it doesn't get watered as much as it should but she's fine she's doing really well so for the end of brazil definitely top of the list next we've got rubber plants I like a rubber plant. I think they're kind of a bit maligned in the houseplant community. They're the kind of plant, if you put them in a dark corner, they won't be like ecstatic, but they probably won't die. If you put them in a bright window, like I put mine in my self-facing window and both of them, and they they just love it, obviously winter, not loving it right now. But in summer, they just, <laughs> they, gr they grow. That's what we're going for, they grow. I'm gonna say Syngonians. Syngonians are one of those plants that I think half of us are going, they're so easy to look after, and the other half are going, never get them. What I like about a Syngonium is they are pretty cheap. You can get some quite interesting colours and like leaf shapes for still pretty cheap. You can get like pink ones and the tri-leaf wonder. The great thing about Syngoniums, if you're new, is that they droop when they're thirsty. The issue is that it can take them a while to forgive you so if they droop and you water them you don't have to wait it can take a couple of days for them to be like okay unlike my next choice which is a peace lily peace lilies droop and then you water them and then a few hours later they're like oh okay i do think peace lilies are a good choice they are pretty cheap they are quite big like you can get get a well-priced one for definitely like under 20 pounds they do have a bit of a reputation for being picky but i think you just kind of i don't know if i'm just lucky with mine uh this one just grows quite happily i think they kind of introduce you to the world of picky plants without immediately just dropping down dead like a maiden hair fern would maiden hair fern would i think hoya are a great option for beginners the only caveat is you can end up with a bit of information overload because people who are into hoya get really into hoya so that sounded weird you know a healthy amount they like bright light they like high humidity and they like to dry out before being watered again but if you don't have the brightest light or the highest humidity they tend to be pretty okay as long as you don't overwater them yeah and they bloom which i think is nice for you know if you're just getting into plants a bloom's nice obviously there's pothos like i'm not going to talk a lot about pothos they are an amazing plant they're just extremely chill oh and aglianema uh, chinese evergreen they're always a solid choice they're extremely chill if you get into calathea and you're not quite sure whether you want to take the leap an aglianema is a nice like gateway plant because if you treat them like a calathea they will respond really really well but if you accidentally let them dry out or your humidity is a bit low they won't immediately like crisp up next i'm gonna just go through a few medium choices these are like by all means go out and get them they're not like, difficult to take care of but there are known issues top is monstera i love monstera i recommend them for beginners but if you are the kind of person that thinks you will just throw in the towel the second you get the hint of bugs don't bother monstera like basically come with thrips 
they just they're just best friends number two in the medium stack is Pilea pepperomides this one with the pancakey leaves i have no idea if that's in frame i love Pilea. mine just grows quite happily uh loves grow lights but again just somehow difficult to read if it, you, you think yours is having an issue like sometimes i went through a stage where it was like all the leaves just seemed to be dropping off and i hadn't changed the care at all and then all of a sudden it like started again it was a little bit like it didn't like the leaves that it had so it got rid of them and then just started growing again i don't know what that was but she's perfectly happy now They're also really good for um people on a budget because they uh produce babies quite prolifically and you're therefore set for like gifts and stuff so because they are a really cute plant they're one of those plants that's cheap and easy to get hold of but still a little bit unusual if you don't have one the other medium choice is calathea as i said like they can be difficult to care for but if you have high humidity and you have you know decent water i've always just given my calathea tap water and they are really not bothered or like we keep ours in a terrarium which is one of the life hacks that you just do not see being spoken about enough calathea go wild in terrariums because it's warm and humid and it's nice and they don't dry out and it's just perfect for them unfortunately they do grow really big in them but because calathea are pretty cheap and they are actually quite hard to kill they are difficult to get to look good because they love they love a crispy tip crispy edges just to curl up just to grow like half a leaf they love all that but the roots are fairly strong. The roots have to be strong, otherwise they would just never have evolved this far. Right, Rifidophora tetrasperma. This should be on the easy care because I've never really had an issue with mine. The issue is price. They are common. Even the variegated ones, they're not common and they are still expensive, but the price is like falling. It's one of those plants that people still try to get away with charging a fortune for. So if you find a cheap one, fine, but don't go looking for one and, and like paying over the odds for it, if that makes any sense. And the last one in the medium is Monstera adansonii. They're a great choice, easy to care for, cheap, easy to find, easy to propagate. The only issue is they're constantly hungry. So if you don't want to bother with fertiliser, I do think you should fertilise your houseplants, but uh, I used to work with a lady who had a conservatory full of the most incredible, massive, like full houseplants. She'd had them for years and she'd never fed them. It's only for... Uh, plants on the plants I would avoid uh, and they are alocasia, orchids, phytonia and anthurium. If you can find cheap anthurium, fine but they're one of the plants, I think in America they're a lot more expensive than they are over here but it's still over here it's quite expensive. What you can do is buy seeds but again buying seeds online is always a bit of a dicey business so I would just tend to not. Orchids, I just don't think they're a great first house plant, they work a little bit different to other plants and i don't think their foliage is impressive enough basically if you think you'll look after a fairly boring leafy plant in between bloomings cool i just wouldn't so i don't tend to recommend them to other people Fitonia, if you've got a terrarium fine is it one of those plants people are like they're so tiny you put them in a terrarium they will take over uh what's the other one alocasia <laughs> I just never recommend people get alocasia. I love them and they are stunning. And to be fair, they're a lot cheaper than they used to be. Like the dragon scale ones you can get for under 15 quid and they are one of the like hardier ones. But I just, I would never recommend somebody get a plant that causes so much stress when there's nothing wrong with it. Like they're just one of those plants, a little bit like begonias. They'll just drop all the leaves. Just, you know, they do it when it's cold. That's fine. Loads of plants do that. But they're just like, mm-hmm or feeling that and then they just start you know then the next day you look at them and there's all these babies growing and you're like i love them but i wouldn't feel right recommending them to other people especially if you're just starting your houseplant collection and you're on a budget right so where do we find these cheap houseplants number one supermarkets not tesco Lidl, they're good morrison's really really good marks and sparks marks and sparks i've got a really nice uh, variegated anthurium from not anthurium Alocasia from Marks and Sparks and whilst the plant is currently it's just a corm so I have got it but I don't know which one it is because you know winter but it was £10 for a beautiful variegated plant and the pot I'd have paid a £10 for the pot alone. I always tell people to avoid buying houseplants that are on, on clearance because they tend to have pests but what I will say is it's a really good place to get um cheap pots 
especially like places like Marks and Sparks where they do you get a more of a premium pot. Uh, Sainsbury's. Sainsbury's are extremely hit and miss but some of the larger Sainsbury's have eclectic collections shall we say? You can get some quite, they're not necessarily rare but they're just a bit different to what you might normally get. So you know they're worth checking out if you're around there. Uh, second place I would suggest, oh uh, sorry, uh, supermarkets, I don't know any American supermarkets, grocery stores that are good for houseplants so feel free to leave a comment if you know any. Uh, now we're going to go on to, no I don't know what these are called, the big warehouses where you go and you buy tools and paint. In the UK we have B&Q, B&Q are really good for plants, they are reasonably priced, you can get some really like rare, not a unicorn, maybe like a rhino, that kind of thing, um, they would be the place you're most likely to find a very, uh, Monstera with sport variegation. I don't know how, I don't know who's supplying them, but the B&Q home base, massively overpriced. Home Depot and Lowe's, I believe, are a similar thing in America. I know on, I'm on a few like Facebook groups and Lowe's, from the comments, they vary a lot. People are like, I found this caramel marble. And people are like, all they have in my Lowe's is like a cactus. So I think it depends on where you are. But obviously there's like plant nurseries. Again, it really depends on where you are. We're really lucky, the one near us, well, it's like 40 minutes away. The guy that runs the house plant section is really passionate about it. I would tend to stay away from little plant shops if you're on a budget, just because their, their plants need to be more expensive because they've got higher overheads. That's what it is. It's not a business that I can imagine makes a lot of profit, so it needs to come from somewhere. So whilst I do love those shops, for like pots and if you want like some fancy soil they're really good for those but I tend not to buy plants from there. Right pots. When you first start it's tempting to like pick an aesthetic and stick with it. When I started I wanted terracotta because they were cheap. Now I would highly recommend terracotta because they're cheap and it you know it's, it's a look isn't it it's an aesthetic. If you overwater perfect stick with terracotta it will be your friend if you're an underwaterer like me no stick with the nursery pots that the plants come in and hopefully over time especially if like we buy plants for our garden as well we end up just kind of piggybacking you know they're like the, the plants are like hermit crabs where they each move up into the next big one pots are just expensive supermarkets are a good place to buy plant pots charity shops thrift sh thrift shops um although there's a lot of like Seems to be a lot of like fine china plant pots and I'm like that wouldn't last two seconds here. Uh, and Ikea. Ikea pots I love because they do they do the one pot in a million different sizes and if you are going for a cohesive vibe yeah that's great. I like there's an Amazon shop called Tea For You. They do like pl cheap plastic pots that are quite sturdy. If you want to try like self-watering pots they do cheap ones so it's a really good place to start. Oh, and TK Maxx. TK Maxx is good. Right, if I was starting from scratch and I needed to buy pesticides, I always used to say neem oil. And whilst I am in the school of people that think that neem oil work, I probably wouldn't necessarily repurchase it. I would probably just get um, Castile soap or washing up liquid. What I have learned over the years is that with pests and houseplants, the key is consistency and keeping on washing your plants off until the pests are gone. What I tend to do is wash them once and then complain as they die because I've only done it once and I don't want to do it again. What I want is to say go to the pests and for them to go. Washing up liquid and Castile soap uh, just dilute like a drop. People say how much? Uh, a, a, a little squeeze, a little drip in some water. I think I use 250ml. I use the amber spray bottles when I do when I do bother. But yeah, consistency is, is the key to houseplant pest eradication on a budget, but it's, it's a pain. Uh, you could try systemic granules. We don't have any in the UK that work and they are pretty pricey. So, but I do appreciate the ease of just being able to water them in and then leave it. The best way to control houseplant pests is to use predatory bugs. That's what they do in like botanical gardens, that kind of thing. There are bugs that eat the other bugs and then the birds eat those bugs and it's a nice circle of life. I'm not one of those people that would be bothered about having bugs in the house and I have had ladybird larvae. The only problem is I didn't have enough pests 
and so what they did was they ate all the bugs and then they flew away that's fine like they did what they needed to do but the next time i got pests i'll then have to spend the like 15 quid on buying more and in the winter which tends to be when the pests turn up you can't have ladybird larvae in the post in winter because they'll freeze and die and i do have a free way of getting ladybirds if you go into the garden and you see a ladybird uh, you pick it up and you put it on your plant in the house and then they eat your pests if you're looking soil that's good value for money just buy houseplant potting soil and then go to a reptile supply shop that sounds like a supply of reptiles i suppose they kind of do uh, and they sell bark you mix the bark in with the soil and you've got a decent potting mix if you are an underwaterer just leave the houseplant soil as it is if you're an overwaterer put more bark in you can go up to like 50 50 probably more depending on how bad of an overwaterer you are you can make your own potting soil i have plants that have thrived in soil that i took out of my raised beds outside so i don't think soil is as important as the people who sell us soil make it seem you can make your own i can't work out if it's cheaper or not to like make it or buy it i know you get better quality when you make it but you also have to buy such vast quantities of, of everything that it's a big initial outlay, not great if you're broke. And then you end up with bags of stuff everywhere. And if you've not got a lot of storage, I would just buy a little bag of houseplant potting mix. Just use that and don't overthink it. Watering cans. I use an old teapot. I bought myself a fancy new watering can and it doesn't work it works almost too well so i'm back to my teapot and i would buy a teapot again it works it works well I w i've got no reason one watering can does not work well teapot works well sit with teapot for fertilizer i would go on amazon and i would look up 10 10 10 preferably indoor but i don't think it really matters to be honest if you don't like buying from amazon you don't have to buy the product but just find one 10 10 10 then look at the reviews the great thing about houseplant care is that a lot of the people that like houseplants and that are good with houseplants are sort of 60s and 70s these people also love leaving reviews and they leave good reviews with pictures so you will see the fertilizer and then the picture of the plant that this fertilizer like brought back to life so I just think it's the best place. Fertilizer seems to be one of those, I, they're not that different. You know, the seaweed ones and fish ones and whatever these ones are. What I will say about fertilizer, and then obviously like buy one with good reviews, whether you buy it on Amazon or off Amazon, it's entirely up to you. What I will say about fertilizer is either buy fertilizer or don't use fertilizer. Do not make fertilizer. Banana peels will just end up with gnats Coffee grounds. Coffee grounds are fine to add to houseplant mix. Fine, 100% fine, but they're not nutritious. They are, they're pretty good for like breaking up the soil and you know, yeah, that's, they're good for like soil texture, but they're not good for fertilizer. If you have a fish tank or know someone with a fish tank, ask for, the, ask for them to give you the water. Don't overthink fertilizer. It's one of those things you can, it can end up taking over your whole life and your plants probably won't care that much. Right, so that's all the things you need to have. These are nice to haves. I'm gonna start with the moisture meter. A bit controversial because, right, I know they don't really work. Moisture meters just really helped me in learning when the, a plant could still be pretty wet after a week. And I didn't believe it when people told me, but I believe, <laughs> I believe the little machine that doesn't work. They're also, a, they're a great gift. If you've got a friend that has a couple of plants and they kind of want to get into them, they make a really good gift because they are pretty cheap, but they are, they're useful for a short amount of, they're very useful, but just for a short amount of time. Um, they can just speed up your knowledge. Everybody going, don't use them, don't use them. I, I get where you're coming from totally, but they really, really helped me. lights if you just want like a nice illumination for a dark corner i would go for a lamp and get a grow bulb uh i do have those gooseneck amazon ones and they're they're okay like they're fine i have no problem recommending them but i do think i'm not massive on the way they, they look i think they work but i would prefer a lamp with a grow bulb 
if you want a proper grow light like a proper professional hangy grow light with the plants underneath that will do a decent job of replicating the sun in winter you're not going to get away with spending less than 75 pound but you don't need to spend much more than that i got sent the best fur and i got sent the mars hydro the mars hydro i believe is like twice the price and the best fur i think is about 75 pounds the Mars Hydro is better, but the for the price, the best that is really, really good. It makes a significant difference to your plants. If you were looking at growing vegetables and things and like you needed flowers and fruits and stuff, then you might be better getting a bigger one. But if we're just growing foliage, the best that is really, really good and a, a million times better than the like gooseneck ones you can get. I'll leave the, the um, reviews for both in the description and you can kind of have a look and see which one you prefer if i had to buy them again i would probably go for the best fur i prefer the mars hydro but it's a little bit like uh, an iphone and an iphone pro this one is fine this one's better but this one's fine it totally does the job and i don't need the stuff that the pro you know what i mean another nice side is a humidifier i don't have a humidifier um but if i was to get one like because i'm a sheep youtubers always go for the lavoit ones they used to only do the big one but now they've got a little one the little one is smaller and cheaper and it might be all you need i, I can't really say much about them because i've not tried them if you like things like calathea or if you like the natural look with the plants like climbing up the walls and stuff or up moss poles humidity will really really help that it wasn't until we got like a big terrarium that I realised how much of an impact our humidity has, even on plants, like even uh, like a pothos, grown in high humidity will grow so much faster and climb so much more than just a one in ambient room humidity. Right, stuff I wouldn't bother with, fancy water. The only things, right, if you've got really bad tap water, if you wouldn't drink your tap water just because you because you couldn't drink it, not because you don't like the taste, then don't give it to your plants. But generally, if humans can drink it, plants will be fine. There are some plants that prefer rainwater, but if you don't want to invest in a water filter, just stay away from plants that like fancy water. My general rule of thumb is, if the plant likes medium to low light and high humidity, it will want fancy water, because it's not used to not having a lot of rainwater all the time. These are plants that grow like in the undergrowth of the rainforest where there is a lot of water and it is very, very pure. Uh, if you have, say, one of these plants, just put a bucket outside and collect rainwater. Somebody asked me about acid rain and I was like, I don't know, like, I tend to use aquarium water just because I've got so much of it. But yeah, acid rain used to be like a real thing and now we're just like, oh, use rainwater, it's fine. So I've, my plants like rainwater, so I stick with it, but yeah. But yeah, you can use a water filter if you've already got a water filter, but I personally think it's a little bit unnecessary. If you have cacti and succulents, they don't care. They'll have your old shower water. If you are on, not even like necessarily on a budget, like if you're the kind of person that likes to be frugal with things like water, they can have your old washing up water, they can have your old shower water, your old bath water. Cactuses are just happy to be getting some form of liquid within reason. Don't pour like bleach on them. You know what I mean though, they're quite happy with medium dirty water. Don't go with distilled water. There are people that use distilled water on plants. The issue you have with it is then you have to be really up on your fertilising. So distilled water doesn't have anything in it, it's just H2O. Mineral water or tap water has calcium and copper and all kinds of things in it that go into the soil and the plant takes them up. Plants like humans need micronutrients, which is what we give them fertilizer for a little bit like us so their macro our macronutrients are like fat carbohydrate protein theirs are like sunlight water sunlight and water but we all need micronutrients like plants with distilled water you have to be giving them you have to be more on it with the amounts of stuff they're not getting anything incidentally so i just wouldn't bother also it's expensive and i think wasteful in most circumstances if you disagree like leave a comment um if you find distilled water useful for like a specific plant or something but i know there are some plants i know orchids are one that they just they actively don't want distilled water so yeah that's my guide to buying houseplant stuff and plants on a budget i hope this was helpful and i will see you next week bye